graduated from high school with a one point average. Nobody bothered to tell me we were collecting points. <laughs> and I spent a good 13 years with some of the top speech therapists in this country just learning how to talk so people would understand me and now they all think I'm from New York. Now, lip reading is my main source of communication, and I do have to go up to people sometimes and say, excuse me, um, but I do lip read, and I usually get this. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> Isn't that true? We all pass judgment. Yes. yes. Well, I pass a judgment, and a very lovely lady. I was invited to Washington, D.C. to perform at the Kennedy Center for some kind of award presentation. When I got there, the stage manager of the show asked me to go into the green room. He said, I need to be quiet. I go into the green room, and in the green room is a woman. She's in a wheelchair. She's a quadriplegic. My first judgment I passed upon her was, my gosh, what kind of a life is this? She can't move. She can't walk. She can't talk. She has nothing to contribute to society. In five seconds or less, I had this woman pegged for death, me. But me being who I am, I went up to her and I said, hi, how are you? She started to open her eyes. At first, I was taken back. I was like, oh, crap, where did I start now? <laughs> when her eyes got really wide, her assistant came by and she said, when she opens her eyes, it means yes. When she closes her eyes, it means no. I said, great, I spent my whole life learning how to read lips, and I got to go to school for some freaking eyelids over here. When I said that, the woman in the wheelchair started to laugh. It was a horrendous sound. It was just, uh, uh, uh. But to me, it was the most beautiful sound I ever heard. I realized right then and there, I can communicate with her. Now, what better person to tell all your jokes to than somebody who cannot heckle you? <laughs> Around the corner comes a gentleman in a wheelchair. He has cerebral palsy. He has no front teeth. Me being who I am, where the hell are your teeth? Man starts to laugh. Uh, uh. It's her husband. <laughs> She's married. I couldn't believe that. I looked her square in the eye and I said, you know what, Ruth? I came in here tonight and I thought to myself, my gosh, what kind of a life is this? Only because I didn't think I can live it if I was in your situation. You're married. I can't even get a date. I said, I hope you get pink eyes. Is that wrong? <laughs> so Ruth had a dream. Now you wouldn't think somebody like her had a dream. It wasn't pole dancing. <laughs> that was my dream. <laughs> With today's technology, she too has a computer. It's called a wood board. They hook it up to the chest. The wire goes to the eyelids. She sees the letters she wants when they blink. She blinks her eyes and goes into the computer. That night, Ruth received an award. She wrote two top-selling books with a blink of an eye. <laughs> After the show, Ruth had a computer printout for me, and it said on it, thank you so much for making me laugh, but more than anything else, thank you for treating me as an equal to anyone else. Well, I took that piece of paper and I wrote on the back of it, and I handed it to her. I said, there, that's your bill for the entertainment. <laughs> the moral of the story is, please, don't pass judgment upon anyone you would not want passed upon yourself. Because believe me when I tell you, there's no limits as to what any human being can possibly do with their lives. Thank you.